Greetings, humans and non-humans out there. I'm back at it again from the basement, doing what I normally do. Four soul stuff. I'm... <laughs> it hasn't been that long, am I right? <laughs> I'm so sorry for the, the long wait. <laughs> I was like, like, oh man, this is going to be a simple series, but then I had somewhat of a burnout, but I, I'm back, you know, that's all that matters, you know, thank you for being patient. I mean, I don't think I saw anyone in the comments screaming, WHERE'S DWELLER? I WANT MY FOUR STALLS PLATS REVIEW! <laughs> um, but th thank you, thank you, Adam. thank you, thank you, thank you so much, it means a lot. Um, so today we're going to be talking about Four Souls Plus, the expansion. Not to be confused with what the gold box expansion was called in the original Kickstarter page. Like, it was called Four Souls Plus, which makes things a bit confusing when you talk to people about Four Souls Plus in the beginning of, of stuff when it comes to collecting cards. Like, I really wish we went with a better name, like, I don't know, Four Souls... Three card, uh, hmm. actually it's harder than I thought, but luckily it's not plus plus, and, and look more luckily for us, the next expansion is called Requiem, so at least it's super easy to distinguish between the other expansions. Let me give you a mini rundown of the history of Four Souls Plus. I remember during the Kickstarter days, and even after the Kickstarter, Edmund kept stating like he would like to do an expansion for Four Souls in the future. He even mentioned that he would like to bring Guppy as a character, as well as the Horror of Babylon. As before, even and the, the Horror of Babylon used to be this, on the same character card, but then they were made separate. Well, granted, it was just Eve by herself, so it was just a mystery to what was going to happen with the other character. Now we know. <laughs> and then, uh, before that, um, t on Twitter, it was announced that we'll get the expansion, you know, and Edmund started to drip feed us some cards over on Twitter. Man, he always drips feed us cards. <laughs> Teases, doesn't he? <laughs> it's not like it's a pattern going on here, but anyways, back, back, on, back on the timeline. And then he just dropped the whole expansion on the Four Souls spoiler website and... Oh gosh. I forgot how bad this old website was. I'm so glad for the Four Souls new website. Thank you, Kizzy, and everyone else who works on the Four Souls website. You know, it, it means a lot. It makes things much more easier for researching Four Souls topics and gathering, you know, cards. It's pretty nice. I'm back on topic. The Four Souls spoiler website showed us that we're supposed to have 98 new cards, and this expansion had four new characters, many iconic monsters, items, and so much coin. Okay, I'm gonna be a little bit more critical on this expansion as it's known for its power creep, and as well as the oversaturation of coins. Another thing to note, I will be talking about the original version of Four Souls Plus, and that's because I plan on talking about the reprints and balance changes, you know, in a separate video. Like in the previous Four Souls video, I also plan on covering this expansion in sections, and give you all my overall feelings towards the end. Let us start with the characters. Character cards. So, this is Four Souls Plus, it's the expansion with 98 cards. Um, we're gonna go over the characters first, but before we do that, let me just look at the box, because um, I guess we didn't look at the gold box box, and I kind of regret doing that. So we got Isaac here, in the back is a little demon form, an angel form, it's pretty cool. Um, I have fake, not fake cards, but I have like some spare Four Souls cards in here, just so it can have that nice little solidness to it when it's on the shelf. First character we're gonna talk about is Guppy. Guppy starts with the item Infestation, and this is, out of the Four Souls Plus characters, I think Guppy might be the slightly more balanced one, as you're going to see how Power Creep affects the other ones. But basically, you get uh, two loot cards, and you get to choose between one, which, solid, right? I, I like that, um, he's, he's balanced? <laughs> I, I hope I'm not scaring people by saying that, because... I mean, you get to choose between two different loot cards, and then that's that. My only complaint is, I kind of wish Guppy himself counted as a Guppy item, because, like, 
think about like what if you play with this card you only need two guppy items to get guppy which you know that would be really beneficial just because like soul of guppy is one of the rarest cards um soul cards could ever get a hold of and i feel like you know it'll be a, i know they'll make him a bit strong but with the new shuffling of soul cards so you might you choose three there's a chance you might even get soul of guppy in there you know and you might even have guppy in there so like that's my complaint about that also this is a card that edmund kept saying that he wanted to make when um if he did a forceless expansion at guppy next card is mech power creep himself dark judas and his item not bag of trash Ooh, all right that's um there we go wrong one apologies i usually have to organize but i did a practice run anyways Dark Judas, Power Creep McGee. Okay, the problem is, a lot of people are gonna be rolling, and eventually, oh, they're gonna get a six, which, uh, there we go, I, I got a six. Boom, you know, he gains three cents all to himself, and he's gonna happen over and over, and then when people die, he gets two loot cards, which in Four Souls, it's a party game where a lot of people die constantly, so you can see how this guy is gonna manifest all those coins and loot cards all to himself and the idea is that you're supposed to gang up on the stronger players but sometimes the player is too strong <laughs> so i know dark just gets has gotten nerfed and that, that's that's i haven't played with the nerf that much because uh, you know most people i play four souls with play irl One cool thing to note is that the background's all dark you know it's not light lit up like you know the other four souls characters that's cool to no. And also, Dark Judas has Dark Arts, which Tainted Judas has Dark Arts, but Dark Judas is gonna... Is, has a Sacrificial Knife right there, but I guess I'll show the artwork of both Dark Judas and, and Tainted Judas. Um, they're holding their opposite each other's weapons. It's one of those weird moments where Four Souls inspired something in the video game, and now we have a consequence that the Four Souls thing happened first, and yeah, I don't know, that's a very funny thing to talk about. Next we have is Bumbo. Bumbo's also another strong character. Um, not Dark Judas strong. Uh, well, actually, no, yeah, these two are very like high level. Like these are like probably the two best Four Souls characters at the time of, of the current meta. I mean, it's gonna switch a lot with Requiem, which they made the deck, um, the, the character deck into an actual deck of cards. So like, that's gonna be a while before I could say who's the best character, but pay four cents, loot one, deal one damage to a monster or a player, or play an additional loot card this turn. If you have money or some sort of money, you're just a monster. Like, you can just, like, eradicate, like, oh, there's a few cents to just eradicate mom. There we go. We got her. Bumbo, very strong. My only complaint is that he's fleshy and not cardboard, which, I, I, that's my only thing that baffles me. I, I don't know why, because later we see Bumble the Weird as a playable character, and he's cardboard, so I'm like, huh. Also, I really hope to get a Bumbo themed expansion where every monster and characters are cardboard. That'd be really cool. Now, lastly, we got Horror Babylon. Now, Horror Babylon, we're gonna go a little history because it's pretty interesting about her. So, before early in Four Souls, Eve was supposed to have the Horror Babylon above her head, you know, because like, if you play Eve, you know, she switches between the two states. I mean, granted, most people want to stay as Horror Babylon because it's more efficient, but, you know. Psst. But then Edmund was like, you know what? I'm gonna use Horror Babylon later, so like, we just have Eve by herself. And I don't know, I kind of wish this became an official promo card in itself just because I just really like the idea of that, but. Well, Edmund decided to make a whole separate character, which is fine. Um, Horror of Babylon starts with the item Gimpy. Uh, it's pretty good because, like, you can go into combat knowing that if you do get damage, you can get, you know, some free goodies or also just plus two damage to start, like, attacking people, you know, harder and stuff. And, yeah, she's also really strong. I I'm not sure if she's, like, she's not Bumbo strong, but she's definitely an A-tier um, character. But um, that's all the characters. I'll leave um, the discussion up to VTuber Dweller. Oh boy, where to start? This is where most people point out the power creep Four Souls Plus added. If you played the game of Four Souls and you were handed one of these characters, you knew the other players were gonna have a bad time. 
Oops, so sorry, I forgot. My, my, my eye goes off when I say bad time. Ooh, they're all, they're all win again. Um, <laughs> Dark Judas and Bumbo are easily one of the S tier characters, along with the Forgotten in this S tier club. You know, I'm sipping on that tasty, salty tears of the many lower tier characters. Horror Babylon's like this low A slash high B tier, as you're gonna have no fear attacking monsters, because if you get hit, you're just rewarded by having the ability to kill a monsters faster or farm better loot cards. Guppy also has a method of farming better loot cards and discarding the trash loot. I don't know, I'm kind of mixed here. Like, on one hand, Four Souls encourages players to combine all the character cards into one deck and then shuffling it and then hand them out to each player randomly so you don't know what character you're going to be and which characters you're going to face. And, you know, because of that, I always felt it was okay to have some characters to be strong. But sometimes, some characters are just too strong. <laughs> if I'm playing the game and it's just like, oh, I won, guys, you know, that ain't a good character design. Like, <sighs> some characters are too strong where players are gonna have to band together just for a chance to win with one of these S tier characters, you know, being an opponent. This also makes the players with these characters either A, power through and win, or B, have a miserable experience of being the main target in the play session. When a Dark Judas or Bumbo is in the match, I know which player is going to be getting most of the curses, items stolen, souls taken away, and target to match much damage. Overall, I could say that the character I like from this expansion is Guppy, as he's the most solid one out here. Like, I know getting, you know, farming for the good loot is pretty strong, but... You know, there's only so much you could do <laughs> unless we're playing modded loot or something like that, but other than that, I don't know, I feel like he's the best when it comes to, you know, ranking these characters for, like, no, no, not for power, you know, because obviously that'll be Dark Judas, so. Oh, gosh. Sorry, I just, <laughs> during this little mini slump I went through, I went to my friend's house and we played <sighs> naked cards, but, um, while playing with his... <laughs> Naked Four Souls cards. We played a game, and he had Dark Judas. It wasn't a fair fight. <laughs> Towards the end, I got, you know, a few treasures, but it wasn't even gonna help me in the end. Like, even Mom's eye shadow, I was like, yo, you go attack Satan. But no, apparently Dark Judas is still too powerful. Also, um, I could go some small trivia. I guess I can mention this again. Old Eve used to have Horror Babylon on her and her character art, but then later I decided to make them separate characters, and now we have Horror Babylon as a separate character. You know, it's pretty, it's uh, something pretty cool. Like, you would know this if you watched the Iceberg video. Totally not plugging it in, you know. Wink, wink. <laughs> nudge, nudge. <laughs> um. Also, Dark Judas and Tainted Judas have an interesting um, art and playstyle dynamic, I guess I could say. So, um, Dark Judas came out first, and he starts with the item Sacrificial Dagger, but in the character artwork, he just has a simple, yo, know, knife. <laughs> and then, Four Souls uh, Repentance. Pff, wait, the Binding of Isaac Repentance happened. Sorry, Four Souls Requiem. And this is, man, why did they start with the letter R, both of them? But. Repentance added Tainted Judas, which was based on Four Souls Dark Judas. So when they added all the Tainted characters, they added um, Tainted Judas in here, and they gave him a normal knife as a starting item, and he has a sacrificial dagger in his character art. Hmm. I don't know, something pretty funny about that, you know. Interesting facts. Monsters. So, it's monster time. Um, we got Boney. Okay. <laughs> so, we're gonna also talk about the bosses, but, um, I mean, I don't think anything's super out of the place. Which I really like about Forces Plus is that these do feel like monsters that, you know, like, feel like part of an expansion that you're like, yo, it's roundy, you know, yo, we got Boney and Globin, and that's about it. I think these are Warm Boy cards, I believe. These are, these are real nice looking. And this, not a Wormboy card, is this Flamehopper. 
Um, it's pretty interesting. That's the I think that's the only burning basement um, enemy we have currently. We got brain. I always find that's a really weird enemy to have. We got sucker. Uh, nerve ending. Okay, this is worm boy for sure. And tumor. I, I don't know. Something about tumor. Like, I kind of want to put it in the fryer. You know, it's like looks kind of tasty. But that's me. You know, don't, don't don't question me. Um. I wouldn't need a real tumor, that's for sure. If you're wondering, I wouldn't. So this is where uh, we get Holy Bony. Now what's cool about Holy Bony is um, he was made in four souls, then later got added into Repentance, and I guess they took the proportions based on that because um, he's actually Big Brain. I'll put a sprite of him on screen. Big Brain Bony. <laughs> and then I know Nitro Secretarius made a meme about where do you work out, and then basically Holy Bony was like at the library. <laughs> I don't know, I don't think I can find the meme, but if I do, I'll put it on screen. Holy Mulligan, same story, was in Four Souls, got added into the video game. I really like Holy Mulligan as a concept, and, and uh, Requiem's gonna add Charmed um, enemies, which is pretty exciting. Now we got Curse Globin. If you watch my Iceberg video, you would know that Curse Globin um, is also an anti burp enemy, so we had a technically an anti burp enemy. And, you know, it, it makes sense because look, you see like this little Globin coming out of him because like in the video game, he, if you destroy one, multiples can't come out of them. And you know, I guess that was kind of the idea of it, but granted, all active monsters he heal, I don't know. He's a really interesting um, curse en enemy to have in battle. And then we have Curse Tumor. If any player rolls a four, all players take one damage. So yeah, basically the concept is holy enemies are cool to keep around. Um, I mean, I guess um, holy mulligan you want to kill just to increase the monster slots, which I feel like more cards gotta expand the monsters and sh um, treasure shops because those are very beneficial. Um, and then curse um, enemies you want to get rid of them because they're making things harder. I didn't talk about them and the the gold box expansion because there weren't any in the gold box expansion. Surprisingly, they were all base game and. Forces Plus added more. Event cards. Boss Rush. Reveal a card on top of the monster deck till you reveal two bosses. And I like that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty cool uh, mechanic. Uh, well, not mechanic, but card. You just find a way to get to bosses. Sometimes it's, you know, there's a lot of clutter before you get to the bosses. Head Trauma. Discard two loot cards. I really want more event cards, you know, I, granted I feel, feel like more positive events to happen, but also I like the negative events, because just imagine like I were some weak player and then you get this, like it's like just kicking the, um, <laughs> a dead horse, which is pretty funny, um, well, well not in real life, but you, you know what I mean. But also um, the more funny scenario happens where some strong player is just prancing through the monster deck and then boom, they just lose two of their loot cards. Um, troll bombs, take two damage. I like this. I'm a chaotic man, you know. I like when bad things happen in my card game. <laughs> Spike chest. You roll, you take one damage no matter what, but you get one of these um, rewards. I took one damage, nothing happened. You get a loot card, or you gain a treasure. I rolled a two, so I just took two damage. <laughs> Ow. I never took four damage, technically, right there. Oh, man, I'm taking a lot of damage. Oh, holy chest, this is pretty cool as I really like the idea of having events where there's a chance you get a soul card. Well, I gain seven cents, which is really great. And also has basically double soul hearts, so you can run two damage. Done, you know, during this turn you may attack additional time. That's pretty cool. Soul hearts, two soul hearts plus a key, or seven cents, or you gain a soul, which is, I don't know, I, I, every time this card shows up, I rarely get the soul, or my friends don't get the soul, I don't know, maybe we're just unlucky. Angel room, this is what I want to see, more positive event cards. You roll, something happens, yo, I gain one treasure, that's really great. Curse of Impulse. At the end of your turn, deactivate all of your active items and character card. Ooh, I mean, this is like, when you have this curse, you just want to use everything as possible because you might as well just because of that. I, I really like that. <laughs> Enjoy that. Oh, wait, let's go back. Edmund McMillan. I asked if this could be called Angel Offerings and have my own custom background because I don't know, it just finds, it looks really weird that the angel's in a cave because, like, if you play the game, they're not in a cave. Um, 
I don't, this just doesn't, I mean, I'm fine with Angel Room right now, but the cave background, I don't know about that. I believe they changed it in the new, um, Requiem version. I don't know, put it, put it up on the screen, maybe I'm right or wrong. Curse of Bloodlust, you must attack on turn of Able. I kind of like this curse as it forces players to not sit around and do nothing. Ironically, it's one of the well better designed curses. So we're in the bosses, and Edmund, I mean, not Edmund, I, most people didn't know that Dingle wasn't in Four Souls, you know, so it's kind of a shock, you know, like, yo, where is he? And then, well, gladly he made his way in, and I, I kind of like it, you know, each time he takes damage from an attack player, you know, we roll, and then something happens right here, five, we, this, it takes an extra damage right there, or all players take one damage, or I take one damage, I don't know, it's pretty fun, um, you know, damage a bob. We got Widow, which there's nothing special about Widow, but and I kind of like the gray gums. I don't know if you can see that. It's just mm, gray gums. Yeah, I don't know, it's a, it's really weird, but I kind of like it. <laughs> then we got Blasto Kai Storm. I don't know how to pronounce this. But when this dies, expand the number of active monsters by two. Maybe attack on the monster deck an additional time. I love this boss because I love cards that uh, expand the monster um, slots. I, I love that a lot. And also he's a pretty simple boss. Not, not nothing to complain about. Monstro 2. He was so good, they made a sequel. I really love how the Brimstone's drawn in Four Souls. I really like it. Each time this takes damage to the attacking player rolls. Okay, another dingle moment, but deal one damage to the player on the right or deal damage to the left. I like that idea. Sorry if you heard that. Headless Horseman. I remember someone said, um, when Conquest is revealed, you know, the fifth of the four Horseman Apocalypse. So I was like, Edmund, Edmund, can we get Headless Horseman? And Edmund was like, no. <laughs> well, um, at least he made it in here into Four Souls and. He's actually pretty interesting. So, the first time this would die, you know, each turn, uh, this turn, prevent the death, and instead it heals, you know, 2 HP and gains plus 1 dice and minus 1, um, no, no, damage. And, and this is really cool because basically he has a phase 2. And this is really important because, um, I believe as, um, um, you know, a lot of people in the Forest Souls modding community, you know, had the idea of states because of Headless Horseman. And honestly, I think it's really cool that you, as, after, you after you fight him, and then like, there's a phase two and it's a bit easier, but mine's the die, he had to roll a bit higher, but I, I really like that. That's really cool. And then here's the Fallen. When this dies, uh, I mean, just use your loot at this point. That's all I'm gonna say. Use your loot. Oh, the Krumpus, Krumpus, Krumpus. This is the one where... Before we recorded this, I, I went to bed, you know, like the previous night, and I was thinking, what am I gonna say about Krampus? So that, that's how much um, this card um, bugs me. Because, like, on one hand... The likelihood of this being your first boss is not common, but if it is your first boss, it's just pain because he does two damage and you have to attack. Each player has to attack when it's their turn to Fable. So basically you're rolling and hoping to get lucky to kill him, which actually I think I did got lucky and just killed him. But yeah, that's the problem. Like I think, I don't know if you should judge a boss based on if you're gonna counter them real early on. Cause like, he's a difficult boss, I think what I would have done is I would have given him plus two treasures or maybe three. I mean, no, I'll keep it to two. That's what I would have done. Also, I just find it weird that his background's all fogged out. Um, I don't know why. I th <sighs> they even did it again with um, Requiem's version, which I'll put on screen. They just like him foggy, I guess. Mom's Heart. As if you watched the previous um, video, when I talked about the Bible, they referenced Mom's Heart, which is really cool. And I really like how Mom's Heart basically ends the game, as that's what it's supposed to represent. So again, plus two souls, and basically whoever has the most souls or tied the most, they're the winner. I, I kind of like this, a card that just ends the game. She's pretty beefy, and also the reward's a little hard. But I, I, I just see, you know, less than three, but you know, I'm a computer, so that's why I'm weird. And I say the best for last, just because I just really love the stunning artwork. Um, Roja and now Deader themselves. Um, here's Isaac, you know, all his angelic glory. And 
honestly is a pain in a fight because you're basically when someone fights Isaac, people are gonna die because when it takes damage from you know basically one damage to a player of your choosing, which you can choose yourself. But even then, that's seven HP. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You gotta hope that people have more HP because people are gonna die. And that's the monsters. I'll leave the rest uh, to VTuber Dweller to talk about his thoughts. I feel like the big meat of this expansion was the characters, as these are the ones you're gonna be experiencing the more commonly compared to the other cards, because, you know, there's only so many cards you can, you know, encounter for each game, you know, in each game you can just shuffle in, you know, skin or set of new cards, and blah blah blah. Um, but, here we are, the monster deck. And, boy, this is a pretty interesting one to discuss. I mean, there's some good, the bad, and the between. I'm not gonna talk them between as those are just filler to my eyes and you know we gotta have some of these cards in here. Uh, pretty cool that we got some iconic characters like you know Dingle finally you know appearing in the game. I was like honestly shocked to find out that he wasn't in the base game. <laughs> uh, I didn't see that coming at all. And um, I guess we could start with Krumpus. No, I'm not talking about how you have to attack Krampus if able and you know it's just Sure, it's pretty scummy if you end up encountering him um, early in the game. Granted, I've been really lucky, and I've never encountered him early. Usually I encounter him late game or a bit of the mid game. So, by the time he shows up, it's not a problem. I kind of like how he forces players to not do the, you know, I uh, draw card, um, play the card, and um, I end my turn. <laughs> I don't like people that do that, man. And then they get on their phones. I'm like, bro, this is game night. This isn't, I'm going to see what's on my text tonight. Like, like oh, no, that's a, that's a pet peeve right there when it comes to four souls. But no, what I'm talking about is what's up with the fog? Like, seriously, why is it there? Like, huh? Like, like, the worst part is they doubled down and brought it back in the 2.0 print. I honestly thought this was like some mistake or something, but no, apparently this is an intended feature. <laughs> like, is it because Krampus was a bit too dark? But we got other dark characters in, that have the same dark background, like the Fallen. <sighs> I'm just baffled, if I'm being honest. Also, it's pretty cool that we got Mom's Heart as the Bible card from the Gold box expansion you know mentions mom's heart so it's pretty cool that Edmund thought ahead about this and it's also pretty interesting that the reward for killing mom's heart is a less than three which means a heart in the texting language like, I don't know I'm pretty old-fashioned I just see less than three but that's just me <laughs> um man maybe I am a robot but um Isaac is interesting. Mega is an interesting mega boss, and that it leads to some chaotic moments where you know other players are trying their best to stop the player from killing Isaac, so they don't die in the process. I kind of like this boss because um, he causes some chaos. You know, I like some chaos in my mega bosses. Now let me break down a very important card that. I was gonna mention it, and it's pretty funny because I contacted someone in the Forces community and they mentioned it as well. So I mean, yeah. I'm pretty glad um, that we have a similar wavelength and um, thinking when it comes to this, but I'm talking about Headless Horseman. Yeah, this is actually something pretty shocking, which I feel like I should, like, you know, talk about since there's not many people that know about what was super special about him. So, Headless Horseman basically is a, a card that has a phase two, which not many cards have this, and many popular, heavily modded expansions. Basically, these are mods that go beyond the Four Souls card design, and because of this, uh, they have a lot of interesting things, and one of these is known as States. You know, there's some mods that, you know, since they're not planned to be printed, they're just, you know, tabletop simulator, it's something pretty simple to add, and, you know, it's pretty interesting having players with, not players, bosses with many phases, and some are actually fun to fight, I do have to admit that, I countered a few of um, them. that I should be playing more modded for souls, but time. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's something pretty interesting to know. Um, yeah, we got a few holy monsters and curse monsters, but meh. 
Oh, I, I guess I should also mention another fun fact in that we got Curse and Globin, which is pretty interesting. As you can see in the artwork, there's little more Globins growing out of him, and he's purple. Just like Curse Globin from Anti-Birth, which later got into Repentance. And this is pretty interesting because, you know, Anti-Birth came out, you know, before, and this came out after. But then later we got Repentance, so technically we had an Anti-Birth monster in the game. Um, also, something interesting to note is this is the only cursed monster that from Four Souls that ever made it into the video game, which some holy monsters made it in, you know, in fact, we actually got some new ones, you know, Holy Boney and Holy Mulligan, which both feature, um, themselves in Four Souls, uh, pff, the, the video game, The Bind of Isaac, uh, Repentance. Pretty neat fact, if I do say so myself. Treasure cards. So we're going through the treasure deck. First one, Guppy's Eye. This is a fun card. Everyone, you know, but you have their blue cards faced revealed to you know to see. Really cool. Also, this card was in Four Souls. This Adam was in Four Souls before it was in Repentance, which is a pretty cool. That Repentance added a Four, another Four Souls thing. Polyphemus. You know, plus two attack damage, monsters you attack, um, they're harder to hit by one. Which is really weird, because I mean, I'm assuming this is balance purposes, but I mean, if, it, if we wanted more accuracy, you would be able to hit them much easier, you know, monsters gain minus one, but I don't know, something tells me if I were to make that change, uh, people will get angry, but I don't know, I, I kind of like that. <laughs> Abaddon, um, you gain plus three attack, but if you take any damage, you die. This is a really cool drawback. Um, funny enough, I've gotten this multiple times with the Lost. Um, it's a really good combo because the Lost, you know, one HP, you die, so really cool. Head of Keeper, pretty good. I like it. More coins. PhD, really cool for any um, combo synergies you're trying to do with non-attack roll stuff. Pretty great. Hourglass. Uh, when anyone rolls a two, you may deactivate an item. It's filler. I don't know. Not too. I mean, it's 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 good in its own merits, but not super exciting. Very pogging. Rubber cement. I kind of like this. Um, every time you miss, um, you could deal one damage to a monster or player. It's pretty um handy. Well, I rolled a six, so nothing happened. But I like that. One up. <laughs> I like it. Lard. Plus two HP each time you take damage, discard a loot card. I really, for the, I really like how Four Souls Plus added, you know, stat ups, but these are like, with like super stat ups with drawbacks. I like that. Game breaking bug. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty strong, and it's, you know, it's, but you have to rely on rolling the one. I mean, yeah, that's gonna happen a lot, actually. That's pretty, pretty powerful. Daddy Long Legs is basically a free bomb. This is where people start pogging, they get hyped. Telepathy for dummies. <laughs> Love the artwork there, I'm showing, you know, the book. And, I, I like it, I like it. I mean, there is one treasure card that's gonna be very outrageous, but these are not it. I, oh man. I have a friend, whenever he gets his card, he's like, I Give me those coins right there, give me, give me them coins, give me that one cent, and I don't know, it's, it's a good way for everyone to have profit, I guess you could say. I'm sure the profits. Each time you roll the same number twice in a row while doing kill the monster you're attacking. I've had this card many times before, but getting that double roll at the same time is easier said than done. But then again, I always get double rolls, like, if I don't have that Anastasia, I don't know. The Wiz. I always thought it was called Dunce Cap until Four Souls reminded me, oh, it's called The Wiz, but I mean, it's alright. Um, it's alright. I don't know, I'm not a big fan of it. Mom's Eyeshadow. Oh boy, here we go. Each time the other player attacks, you may choose which active monster they attack. I'm mixed on this because I love how evil one person can be. It's like, oh, you want to attack the monster with soul? <laughs> well, sorry, you're going to have to attack Boney instead. You know, no soul for you. I don't know. It's like, 
It's evil. I, I don't know. This is clearly not balanced at all. I'm gonna agree with that. That ain't balanced. The fact that you just choose for a number player. You know, it's like, oof. Yeah, I believe it got reworked. Um, put it on screen. Um, yeah. Cost oi. Each time you roll a 6 while attacking, gain plus 3 for that attack roll, you roll a 1, cancel attack. I actually really like it. It's a pretty good um, interpretation of Cursed Eye in Four Souls. Mama Hunt. Now this is a cursed item, which there's two in the base game and then more in Requiem. Basically, the idea is if you're trying to buy a random item, if you grab one from the top, there's a chance it's a cursed one. Because if it's in the shop, no one's going to buy this, but... I kind of want more cursed items. I don't know. I just, I just like the idea. I remember an expansion that had cursed loot cards as well. That <laughs> I think that was pretty cool. Cursed trinkets. Divorce papers. Destroy this. Choose a player. And that player. Half of their... This is really funny. It's like... I, I remember it's like... Buddy. Red Star. I'm getting a divorce of you. And then just taking half of their stuff. It, it's this really fun creative item. I like that. I like that a lot. Also, there's some of that lore right there, you know, Isaac's mom's last name again, um, I'm not sure you can see it, we'll put it on screen just so you can see it better. Mutant Spider. And I love this item, this is, this is, this is the good stuff. So the next time you roll, instead of one dice, you get four dice. And this is just like awesome right here, you just roll and then like, oh, I want to choose that one, the six, you know, I don't want the five or the three, you know, I want this one. That's just so cool, the fact that you get a way to get four dice, that, that's awesome. One of the best uh, treasure cards designed out there. 20, 20, add up to two to any attack roll. I love it. <laughs> I think the active items are really great in this expansion. Um, destroy this, all players discard a soul card they control of their choosing. I'm part of Chaos Gang. I love this. I, I, I like that a lot. Chaos Gang, Chaos Gang. Descent of Moderation, force our player to give a loot card of their choosing. You must play that card. That's pretty funny, because uh, it could be literally um, anything. Z Red Candle. Before dice is run, that's alright. We're not going to read everything because we're going to take forever. Change the result of a dice roll to a three. Actually, that's pretty handy in times. Mm, alright. Not out of card I'll be excited for. Rainbow Baby. Um, we need more familiars in the game. I, I don't know, that's just my own thing. Choose one. Um, players take one damage on um, person actually this is really good you know I, re I really like that it's like a support for all players height of Krampus so we have Krampus so of course we're gonna get his head you know in the game and deal one damage to one player deal one damage to all active monsters it's pretty chaotic you know you may get what you want you may not get what you want the black candle which is it really the same artwork but just different color oh my goodness and everyone said my twitch emotes were lazy We got the one card I don't even know how to pronounce. I still don't even know what it is because like it's a sharp point right here, but then right here is like a little claw, so I don't know what it's really supposed to be. But discard a loot card, force a player, discard two loot cards. Pretty um, good, I like that. And I'll uh, leave the rest to VTuber Dweller. This is pretty interesting as we got a good chunk of cards that are pretty cool and not cool at the same time. We got two different damage up cards, which are Abaddon and Polyphemus. Um, I never said those names out loud, so I don't know if I said them right. <laughs> um, both have unique effects that are drawbacks for becoming so strong. Also, we have Lard with that big HP up with a drawback. It's all the cards in my eyes. You know, Four Souls benefits from having more stat upgrades, and these are could be seen as super upgrades with some balanced drawbacks. We also get some fun cards like Guppy's Eye, which is pretty fun um, to have. You know, it causes some chaos, and also fun fact, it was in Four Souls before in the video game. This um, card, you know, adds a lot of fun with the social game aspect. We got 2020, you know, Stagey. Yeah. You know, the stuff. PhD, etc. You know, we, we got some good cards that add fun to the experience. I really enjoy these. 
but the best treasure card from a design perspective, in my opinion, has to be Mutant Spider. You get four dice to represent the quad shot you get from the video game, and it's just a fun item to have. Me and the boys be pogging whenever we see this item in the item shop, or it's a treasure we gain. Now, let me tell you one of my least favorite cards in expansion. No, it's not the new curse item, Mama Hunt. I actually love the concept of curse items, and I wish we could get more. And maybe we get cursed trinkets and stuff like that. That'll be pretty cool. Also, while I'm at it, Edmund, please, please, I'm begging you, add blessings to the monster decks. It could be like curses, but except they're beneficial. So you can give it to yourself, but... You can also give it to your friends, just like the curse cards, and it'll be real cool. Like I, I know we have blessings in the room deck, but no, no, no. I want the real deal. You know, it's like blue fire instead of purple fire. It would be nice. So please, man. Um, back on topic. Mom's eyeshadow. Yeah, what's well, left to be said? If you have this card, you become public enemy number one. I'm kind of surprised that they doubled down and remastered the print, you know? Uh, rem remastered it without changing its abilities. And, that's, I, I mean, what's there left to say, you know? It's Mom's eyeshadow. Just gonna be a jerk. I mean, I guess you could not use it, so what was the point of buying it then? So it's, you kind of want to take advantage of it, you know? It's just... Overall, there's some cool cards, and there's, some of them are mediocre, or there's a few bad apples, like our taste, but I really do believe that the good cards kind of outshine the experience. Loot cards. Okay, this should be the easy one. One cent. One, well, it's a penny. Penny. Why was there three? Coins. It's just coins, you know. Just we gotta have that filler. Okay. The problem here is, um, uh, this is before um, I mean, deck building was encouraged. Cause I tell you, we could always deck build, but Rec Room really wants you to have deck ratios. The problem is, that's a lot of coins, man. Like. Uh, <sighs> I, I, I get that I Evan mean, didn't want there to be too many non-coin cards, but come on, man, that, that that's just a lot of coins. Like, this is where this is where the issue of um, fan expansions adding coins and stuff or the thing, and you know, just it's too many coins. Bomb. I really like how the artwork is the bomb exploding. If, if you look at other artworks, it's like you know the the fuse is like getting close, and this is like it's in the verge. Little battery, nice to have batteries, more of those. Butterbean, love these loot cards, we need more of those. Dice shard, I love this card, we need more of those. Gold key, so pretty interesting that skeleton key and gold key made it in. Now, granted, gold, skeleton key is an item, but gold key is a trinket. You know, this made it in before normal key got in. I, I, I don't know, I'm just a bit baffled that we didn't get normal key until a while. And it was only because fans wanted a normal key yet, and I was like, oh, okay, well, what is that a key? <laughs> um, pills, I, I, I like pills, um, these are the, the pills they added. White pill, black pill, and white and speckled pill. Nothing too cr I mean, maybe there is something crazy, but I just want to speed this along. It's real nice to have more pills. Question mark card, copy the active effect of an item play. Pretty nice to have that, you know, so we can get double the action, basically. Get out of jail free card. <laughs> Other players can play loot cards or the active player items to end of the turn. I kind of would have rewritten this as, if you're about to die, just say no to that or something. I don't know, I, I just think that would have been really cool, but I really love the artwork right there. See how <laughs> we'll I'll put up the artwork up there so you can see it, you know, much clearly. And sauce. Look at the top four cards of any deck and put them back in any order. Comes in handy, especially with four players. You basically, you know, if you predict, you know, which loot cards are gonna be gained in what turn order, you can like guarantee the ones you're gonna get. I like that. Or you can do it at the end of, of the person before your turn and then just like get the guaranteed loot card you want. Path row, destroy an item, and then replace it. I really like the idea of re-rolling cards, um, treasure cards. Black rune. Roll and things happen. I rolled a five. 
I discard my hand and then loot three, so I hope um, I didn't have a large hand that time. So this is where we go to the, I believe the four trinkets. Triple A battery, pretty nice way to get a you know, recharge of your items. I like that. Trinket. Tapeworm, you know, ooh, it's long worm. <laughs> Each time you miss an attack, deal one damage to another player. I mean, the problem is that you're hurting players and then they're gonna get mad and attack you, but... Eh. Poker chip is pretty interesting as you could just double or nothing your... Um, I mean, you don't nothing, you get one cent. Or do you double, which I, I gained one cent. I, I, I was unlucky in that roll. And lastly, the left hand. Um, each time another player dies, you may recharge an item. Solid. It's um, not. Yeah, you know, it's, it's good. I mean, not the greatest trinket, but you know, trinkets are not meant to be powerful. So yeah, I'll give the rest to VTuber Dweller to take over. For the cards, the main issue I have with it is they added too many coins. Forza's Plus was kind of advertised as this expansion that you just merge in with your existing game by you know merging thus the content but when you do that you're not knowing that you're actually making the good loot harder to acquire i feel like this loot deck should have added more bombs soul hearts butter beans and i mean i just want more utility loot <laughs> um it's cool to see that there's a golden key in the expansion granted we got this before the normal key and we weren't gonna get the normal key but we got it because luckily you know like, you know, voted for key and that, you know, towards the beast drop at the end of the Four Souls livestream of Bob and Kickstarter days. Now, Edmund heavily encourages people to deck build now, which I guess it's fine. I mean, technically, there wasn't really anything stopping you from just taking out the coins and the deck in the first place. Granted, that felt illegal for me because I just played with all the cards and it's gonna be the mad lad who plays record with all the cards. No, well, actually, there's might be a few might take it over. It's mostly all the cards. Foil pack. Oh boy, these look very shiny. So we have the normal four souls pack, which you get 98 cards plus one. Um, you get a, an extra card, which is gonna be a foil card. So it doesn't replace your card. So let's say like, yo, know, you have like a foil Isaac. You still can have normal Isaac in there. So basically you get 99 cards. It's pretty cool. But some versions of this um, have a, something that's more special than others. A limited edition little sticker right there means all 98 cards are foil. And you don't get a bonus card. I don't, I don't think I did, but so, I mean, you, you get less one less card because, like I said, the other one um, you gain um, 99 cards because one of them's foil. You got a copy of foil, foil copy. The other one's just well, 90, 98 cards all uh, foil. When I got this, this is when I knew that there's no turning back of becoming the Four Souls guy. The <laughs> so basically, I have every single card and every single variation, and I just want to go over the interesting foil cards. So like, some people would like to see, you know, the shininess of the. The, the character cards, you know, that's something they like to look at. You know, those are the highlights you want to get, the, the character cards. Those are really solid. I like the way they look. I mean, granted, um, the foil isn't the best um, quality. You know, it's just like item and border, and then everything else is just... No, just the item art is like sticks out, and everything's just shiny, which... It's, it's quite interesting because um, we're going to go over some promo cards in the next video, and they do the foils a bit differently. Um... Also, like, it's really weird how Cursed Eye, the white part, is just see-through, so that's like a, just a downgrade right there. Um, I'm gonna quickly grab Cursed Eye. Oh my goodness, that was the first one, okay. Uh, so you see right here, you know, it's white right there, but for some reason, the foil version, there's just nothing. I, I don't know, that just looks wrong. <laughs> There's that one right there. Um, uh -huh, I just wanted to show what a cursed um, foil treasure would look like. You know, monster cards, the artwork is, and the textures and stuff is normal, but everything else is shiny. And, oh, it's really weird, because this is not tr traditional um, foils, like, like Pokemon foils cards and stuff. They're pretty cool. I, I guess when you play Four Souls of Me, you know I'm awesome, because... <laughs> 
Oh, I play with the foil cards. I know some people are like, oh, he plays with foil cards. But I'm like, I just like the idea that some cards are gonna be foil while others are not. You know, it just, it, it adds a nice mix to it. I don't know. I'm pretty sad that I'm probably not gonna play with them once I get my Requiem copy. I mean, I'm gonna add some foil cards in just because I like them so much that I, well, I just like this. The Angel is one of those cards I really like because I just love how the, the aura around his head is this weird separate foil thing. And I'm not sure, you can probably get a good gist of it right there. Hmm. Love that. <laughs> this, I just realized this is me flexing, but I, I promise it's not. <laughs> Some people are just generally curious of how these things look like. I, I know for a fact. Uh, Monstro, it looks really nice. Foil, foil. Crumbus, I don't know. I still don't like how there's fog in there, but I just want to get that because it's a unique monster background. This is um, Mom's Heart. And now, this is my third foil that I'm for sure gonna put in my Requiem deck just because I just like the way it looks. It's just, this, this is why I feel like how Isaac, the guy's card is supposed to be at all times. It has to be this shiny card. And I know these are probably more valuable if you were to sell. Because, like, some people sell the foils individually. And I know that this is one of the covenant cards you want to get. But yeah, that's um, the limited edition version of Four Souls Plus. Legends say if you purchase Four Souls Plus during the original run, you'd have received a limited edition version of Four Souls. It has a little sticker, and this version has all 98 cards foil. So shiny, so groovy. Normally, you'll get one card that would have been like a, a double that would have been foil. This, I don't think you get a double card. I think it's just all 98 cards. I don't remember, but I, I'm pretty sure it was like that. So, I guess technically the original version gave you 99 cards instead of 98 cards because you get one fo free foil, which is a pretty cool thing, but, you know, um, all shiny cards, this is what we want. <laughs> you have to be very lucky, or be a mad lad and pay Evan a huge sum of money during a, a ki tapeworm Kickstarter, you know, campaign, and, oh wait, buying this was one of the many steps that led me to giving myself the title of the Four Souls guy. Purchasing this meant that I had every single card and every single variation. And was it worth it? Eh, I don't know. I mean, it's nice playing Four Souls and having a good chunk of cards being shiny. I, I don't know, I can't really explain it. You shuffle the loot deck, you grab some. You know, some of the cards are shiny, some of them are not. You play against monsters, some of them are shiny, some of them are not. Same with the treasure deck. I don't know, it just added this fun variety, you know, making some of the cards all special, like, and... I don't know, it kind of stings a bit when I buy Four Souls, um, you know, Requiem Full Collection that I'm probably not going to be playing with my photo cards. They're probably going to be in my original box, which I guess I could play classic Four Souls with my friends whenever I feel like it, and... That's pretty special, I do believe. Mm. Though, I guess I probably am going to take a few foil cards, especially the good looking ones like Isaac into the, to my version of Requiem, just because I just really like foil Isaac. He looks so shiny and cool. And yeah, I, I, I like these. Overall rating. At first, I thought I was gonna rip this expansion to shreds, but over time, I kind of started to appreciate the more groovy cards, and they get to, like, four souls plus. Like, like, don't get me wrong, it's not perfect, but I kind of like the variety as, you know, I always saw this game as this fun party game experience for my friends, and I'm all for the cool fun chaos this adds, and, you know, sure, I mean, we have the Pirate Creek, um, characters which did get some nerfs and rebalances which I do like. I have friends I haven't played with them as I wait to have physical version. I mean I did play technically um, when I did test but, uh, but that, that's a whole separate thing. I don't really count that. I want to make like the real deal sitting down with my IRO friends. That part I have not tested. And I actually do recommend getting this expansion especially with the 2.0 print with the balance changes and better wording. I've been the Four Souls guy. Take care of me, buddy. <laughs> okay, let's not call myself that. I'm Basement Dweller, you know? <laughs> Take care of me, buddy. Have yourself a groovy day slash night. 
Uh, let me blow the candle. It was a pleasure, you know, being back. Take care. Bye-bye.